Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of the Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Welcome to our celebration on this 18th Sunday of Ordinary Time. In our gospel today, we hear about Jesus multiplying the five loaves and two fish to feed the multitude. And he is here with us to do another miracle, to multiply bread and wine to become his body and blood to feed us. So let's now prepare our hearts, mind, and soul to receive him in his word and Eucharist by first acknowledging our sins, asking God's mercy and forgiveness. I confess, confess to Almighty God, God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, therefore I ask Blessed Mary of our Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord of our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. i 
God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace on earth, peace to people of good will. Let us pray. O oh Lord, draw near to your servants and answer their prayers with unceasing kindness, that for those who glory in you as their Creator and Guide, you may restore what you have created and keep safe what you have restored. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. I noticed that some cars have their lights on. Uh, I just... Uh, advise that you turn off your light so that your battery uh, will not uh, die and we don't want you to be stuck here tonight a reading from the book of the prophet isaiah thus says the lord all you who are thirsty Come to the water. You who have no money, come. Receive grain and eat. Come without paying and without cost. Drink wine and milk. Why spend your money for what is not bread? Your wages for what fails to satisfy. Heed me and you shall eat well. You shall delight in rich fare. Come to me heedfully. Listen, that you may have life. I will renew with you the everlasting covenant, the benefits assured to David. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The hand of the Lord feeds us, He answers all our needs. The hand of the Lord feeds us, He answers all our needs. The Lord is gracious and merciful. from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, what will separate us 
from the love of Christ? Will anguish or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or the sword? No. In all these things, we conquer overwhelmingly through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor present things, nor future things, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. The word of the Lord. Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus heard of the death of John the Baptist, he withdrew in a boat to a deserted place by himself. The crowds heard of this and followed him on foot from their towns. When he disembarked and saw the vast crowd, his heart was moved with pity for them, and he cured their sick. When it was evening, the disciples approached him and said, This is a deserted place, and it is already late. Dismiss the crowds. Dismiss the crowds so that they can go to the villages and buy food for themselves. Jesus said to them, There is no need for them to go away. Give them some food yourselves. But they said to him, Five loaves and two fish are all we have here. Then he said, Bring them here to me. He ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass taking the five loaves and two fish, and looking up to heaven, he said a blessing, broke the loaves, and gave them to the disciples, who in turn gave them to the crowds. They all ate and were satisfied, and they picked up the fragments left over, twelve wicker baskets full. Those who ate were about 5,000 men, not counting women and children. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Our celebration of the Eucharist here in this school field kind of reminded me of the crowd sitting in uh, the grass in the gospel where Jesus uh, fed them uh, with the loaves and fish that he multiplied. When my mom died in 2015, that marked a new chapter in the lives of my brother, sister, and I. Both of our parents are now gone, we're now gone which means that the sense of urgency to come together as a family is no longer there. Our parents were always the one that kind of called all of us 
to come together as a family. They were like the uniting force for us, brothers and sisters. The wise guidance of and caring presence of our parents were no longer there. So how do we continue to live and walk our lives considering that our parents were no longer with us physically in this world? When I reflect on this, it gives me a sense of peace believing, believing that when my time here on earth is up, my mom and dad will be waiting and welcoming me at the pearly gates in heaven. At least I hope that I go there. I imagine my mom praying and talking to Jesus on my behalf as she always did when she was still alive. From time to time, when I do something good in my priestly life, I would imagine my mom smiling, happy and proud of me as her son who's a priest. Sometimes in prayer, I would also think of my dad. I would tell my dad, can you give Jesus a hug for me? If you're up there, can you say hi to uh, some of my old parishioners who have also passed on, Michael or Jack, who my dad became friends with because of me. So in this new chapter of my life without my parents, I continue and walk my life looking up and thinking of heaven and continue to live my life to the best according to my vocation as a priest and according to God's will and purpose for me. In our gospel today, Jesus was also entering a new chapter in his life. He heard of the death of John the Baptist, the cousin he was close to, not only by blood relationship, but most importantly, because of their connection to God's plan of salvation for us. John the Baptist was the precursor, the preparer, the one who paved the way for the Savior. Jesus was the Savior, the reason for John's mission. So the death of John the Baptist probably perturbed Jesus. No wonder our gospel tells us that Jesus withdrew to a desert, deserted place all by himself to pray, to reflect, what this new chapter meant for him, new chapter in his life. It probably caused Jesus some anxiety knowing that John died a violent death. He was beheaded for preaching the truth and repentance to King Herod. And this, is this what await him, Jesus, if he continues his mission? Our gospel shows us how Jesus continued on. He continued to look up to heaven, to the heavens, to continue to do his Father's will and purpose for him. He continued to teach the truth to the crowds who were, who, who were following him, showed compassion and mercy. He cured the sick. He fed the hungry with the five loaves and two fish that he multiplied. He forgave sins, drive out demons. Jesus continued to walk and live on according to God's will, dream, and purpose for him. Even it might mean suffering the same fate as John the Baptist. In our experience in life, we enter a new chapter in our lives when a tragedy happens, when something serious and difficult happens. 
in our lives. For example, like this pandemic. We experience or maybe have known people who have succumbed to the virus. We know that Marlene and Val, our own parishioners, uh, have uh, contracted the virus and we're praying for them, for their uh, recovery, for their health and protection. Some people have lost employment. Some people have lost businesses. So for some people, this is a new chapter in their lives that they have never experienced before. We enter also a new chapter in our lives, not only when difficult things happen, when, but also when good things or joyful things happen, like a marriage or a graduation. Those who are now going to high school or to college who graduated this summer those who have received their first communion the past Sundays or tomorrow and, uh, and to Sundays from now, those who will receive their confirmation. These are joyful moments that start a new chapter in people's lives. And Jesus shows us how to continue to walk and live on in the new chapters of our lives. And that is to continue to look up to the heavens, to look up to God, and to remind ourselves of our vocation, our mission in life, God's dream and plan for us. To remind ourselves that we are God's children, called to do great things, to make God smile and proud of us. With Jesus who gives us his body and blood in the, in the Eucharist, with the Holy Spirit, who empowers and guides us with His gifts, we need to continue to fulfill God's will and purpose for us, to continue to show compassion and mercy. We need to continue to bring healing and reconciliation in our relationships, to forgive, to continue to feed the hungry, as Jesus did in the Gospel, help those in need. This first Friday and uh, Saturday that's coming up, we have our uh, COVID food drive. And I invite all of you, our parishioners, to once again uh, share your blessings, be generous in uh, uh, donating food items that we will donate uh, for our food drive to families who are in need at this time. As you know, the um, the payroll uh, protection uh, and the stimulus and care uh, checks that are being uh, given by the government is expiring uh, this end of July. And in the news we hear that families are in need uh, of uh, help you know, to put food in their, on their tables. So if you can share your blessings, uh, if you could donate food items for our food drive, uh, that would be a wonderful thing uh, uh, that we could uh, do. You know, in um, Jerusalem or in the Holy Land, there's a place there called Tagba, where supposedly the five loaves and two fish uh, happened. And at the entrance of this uh, shrine, of the church, it says there that the five loaves and two fish were never enough to feed the multitude until they were given away. Until they were given away. And in a way, that's a message for us that we could also give away by sharing some of our blessings with those in need. So my brothers and sisters, in whatever chapter of our lives we are in, what matters is that with Jesus and the Holy Spirit, we continue to walk and live on as best we could according to God's will and purpose to, wait, to always look up to the heavens.
we will now profess our faith in the Most Holy Trinity. I invite you to respond, I do, to the following questions. My brothers and sisters, do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, and rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? I do. I do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? I do. I do. This is our faith. This is the faith of the Catholic Church, and we are proud to profess it in Christ Jesus, our Lord. We know that God will never abandon us, and so we cry out with our needs and the needs of the world, knowing that we will be heard. For the church, our Pope, bishops, and priests, that we may continue to lead and guide us, they may continue to lead and guide us to remain rooted in Christ during this difficult time, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For our government, civil servants, and leaders, may God help them to act and decide for peace, justice, liberty, and well-being of all people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For our confirmandees and first communicants, may they grow deeper in their relationship and love of Jesus with the help of the Spirit, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For all our healthcare workers, may God strengthen and protect them from infection and harm as they care for those who are ill. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For our Nativity Parish and school families, our ministries and volunteers and staff, may we remain connected in communion and united in faith, prayer, and in Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For all of you watching in your homes and in union with us spiritually, may God protect and bless you with health, peace, faith, and compassion. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For the intentions now, our website prayer wall, for our priests, staff, and parishioners, the deceased and sick in our community, for the Ong family, Director Bosconcilio, Jack Vargas, Araceli Flores, for our birthday celebrants, Mac Ordonez, Susie Huesca, Patricia Venegas, Veronica Ibarra, for those celebrating wedding anniversary, for Doug and Jill Trujillo, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those infected with the COVID virus, especially Bernadette, Val, and Marlene Rodriguez, Richard Forget, Diane Pierce, Nati Ordonez, Marisa Ligaspi, and for those, for the repose of the souls who have, of those who have succumbed to the virus, Denise Menhivar, Sylvia Orozco, Jorge Lugo, Leticia Pacas, and for peace and consolation of their families, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For God's healing on Beda Lucero, Rosemary Simon, Julieta Contreras, Claudia Villasenor, Annie T, Mary Kai, Angela Batres, God's blessing and protection for the Yip family, Peggy Prius, Teresa Wong Nguyen, Paul Ariaga and the Monroy family, for uh, the Cordea family, for the Montecito neighborhood families, and for those who have lost their jobs, may God in His mercy answer their prayers. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. And for all the prayers that we hold in the silence of our hearts. For all these intentions, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. God of life, you, you are the source and destiny of our lives. Calm the storms in our lives. Kindle your spirit within us and hear the prayers we offer through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, the Good Shepherd, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen.
sisters, my brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of God's name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. O Lord, graciously sanctify these gifts, we pray, in accepting the oblation of this spiritual sacrifice, make of us an eternal offering to you through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. With your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you so loved the world that in your mercy you sent us the Redeemer to live like us in all things but sin, so that you might love in us what you loved in your Son. By whose obedience we have been restored to those gifts of yours that by sinning we had lost in disobedience. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as an exaltation we acclaim you. sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ at the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion he took bread and giving thanks broke it gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of fate. We proclaim your death, O oh Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Jose, our Archbishop, our Auxiliary Bishops and all priests and deacons. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Saint Joseph, her faithful spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours for ever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, power, and glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. With your spirit, Father. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace, peace, everyone. Peace, peace. God who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. 
Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Those of you who are participating in your homes, I invite you uh, to pray your spiritual communion prayer at this time. If you don't have the prayer, just speak to Jesus uh, from your heart and uh, welcome him uh, to enter your heart uh, spiritually. Accompany with constant protection those you renew with these heavenly gifts, and in your never failing care for them, make them worthy of eternal redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. Just a few announcements before the final blessing. Those who are receiving communion, I invite you at this time to use your hand sanitizer to uh, sanitize your hand before receiving communion. We congratulate all our first communicants and their families and also uh, our young people who will be receiving their confirmation tomorrow at the 8 a.m. Mass and on the 16th. So congratulations to all of them and their families. Next Friday and Saturday, as I mentioned, is our uh, COVID food drive. Uh, help us to care for those in need during this difficult time. Uh, for the food items you, you can donate, please visit our website nativityelmonte.org again nativityelmonte.org one word and just follow the link COVID food drive uh, then you we have a, a, a flyer there that lists all the food items that uh, you can uh, buy and donate that are uh, more useful for for families you may drop your food donations in the boxes found near the kitchen area of our Lavang Shrine patio. For the emotional and psychological well-being of our families, on August 23rd, that's like uh, three weekends from now, three Sundays from now, at 8.30 p.m., we invite you and your family, especially uh, we have children, to come out and join us in a drive-in movie night here in the school field. The entry gate at St. Louis Drive will be open starting at 7.45 p.m. So we're offering the, uh, this uh, movie night, hoping that you know, you'll know you feel comfortable to get out of your homes. Uh, I think it's also healthy emotionally and psychologically not to be cooked up in our, in our homes and, and enjoy the fresh air that God provides us. Please visit and explore our website, nativityelmonte.org. Using our website, you can access the readings and song lyrics for our Sunday Masses, like for today. You may offer Mass intentions online, submit prayer requests to our prayer wall, make your Sunday contribution online, view our live stream Sunday Masses, and also see some of our Paris photos and videos and more. So please familiarize yourselves with our website. And have a beautiful uh, weekend and Sunday. Uh, continue to stay safe and healthy. The Lord be with you. With your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Nourish and strengthened by the Mass, let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord and one another. Thanks be to God.
God will not leave us to start. Thank you.